let's talk about the story of handwriting. So in my book, inside the front cover, is an example of the writing of a scribe called Alcuin of York. He was a, a monk from York. And it is this writing from 800, which is found in the Library of St. Gallen in Switzerland, that we see the way the lowercase letters of the alphabet developed. So we can turn to the page, which is the story of handwriting in the book. And here you will see it explained in detail how King Charlemagne, who is shown in the book down here, Charles the Great, after he and his father had fought 4,000 battles to reintroduce Christianity through Western Europe, he was, by chance, he met Alcuin and asked Alcuin to design a script which was smaller and faster for the monks who were now being re-established into the monasteries. So I'll show you now how Alcuin was ingenious in designing the lowercase alphabet. I have shown it here where the Roman capitals were divided by a red line through the center and then Alcuin was able to design the lowercase letters from the lower half of each of those Roman capitals. Let me just show you on a piece of paper how that was developed. So if I was to do the alphabet, so say A, B, C, D, E, pardon my scribbling these a little bit, just so that I can show you quickly how these letters were formed. you'll see the origin of the lowercase. So Alcuin very cleverly, he drew a line through the middle. And now this was the half alphabet. That is a half A, a half A, like that. A B, he allowed it to remain tall, but used the lower bowl. A C, he cut it in half and used the lower half. The D cut it in half using the lower half. Often that's shown as the Greek D. Then the E just moved one of the bars into the center of the lower half. The F he allowed it to be tall and used the crossbar on the middle line. Now the G he was able to use that, extend that line there and create a half G. The H he allowed to remain tall and use the lower half, just cutting off that part. And now he had the eye, which was easy, just a half eye, so we've got our line through here. And you'll notice a pattern now where he has a short letter, short, a tall B, short, tall, short, tall, short, tall. Now he's got a short eye. He must have been very happy with that pattern because he was able to uh, create a pattern which uh, the people of those times loved these patterns and uh, there was no J until the 1500s so his K was able to be tall by just moving that V shape under the line but here he got a problem he could not create a short L so up until that time he's able to go short tall short tall etc but now with the L, he couldn't do that. So his reaction to that was that from then on, there'd be no tall letters. So the M starts still on the middle line, but he creates just two arches from the bottom. The N just starts on the middle line again. The O starts on the middle line. And in fact, from now on, everything simply starts on the middle line and there's no tall letters. If you wish to see how he handled the other letters, it's all in the penmanship book. So the story of writing started 2,200 years ago when the Phoenician people were able to develop 
letters from the um, hieroglyphics that they'd been taught by the Egyptians when they were taken prisoners of war. And what they decided was that they'd like to write back to their relatives to say they were okay. And they'd take a hieroglyphic, for instance, they'd take a hieroglyphic of an ox's head, for instance. The ox's head is like this. And this was the hieroglyphic for an ox. But the word for ox was Aleph, A-L-E-F. So they simply turned that symbol into an A ah sound. So over time, the A was turned upside down and it became the A we recognise. So these people were called the Phoenicians and they very cleverly invented the phonetic alphabet. So that's where the word phonetics comes from. So it goes right back to this period, 2,200 years ago. And after they developed about 12 letters, that was passed to the Greeks, who invented more sounds and letters, and the Romans, who developed the alphabet up to 22 letters. And the others have been added in since then. So we have got a wonderful heritage of our writing and it was so wonderful because many other cultures thought that we made thousands of sounds when we uh, wrote, when we, when we spoke. So they ended up um, in fact inventing pictogram writing such as the Chinese writing um, and that was extremely laborious to learn. Whereas the phonetic alphabet simplified things, allowing for the introduction of writing as an art for the general population and in fact led to democracy because it was a great leveller, the introduction of a simple alphabet, which didn't take years and years to learn. Imagine a Chinese character has to be practised up to sometimes 400 times in order to be memorised. We simply can create words by taking the sounds that we use. So uh, the foundation of the Western world is this wonderful Roman alphabet, which later on was developed into an upper and a lower case alphabet. The majuscules came first, the minuscules came later, and that has developed through many styles since then, which have all been based on that. We had the, the style of the uh, Carolingians during the time of Alcuin and Charlemagne through to the Gothic and then the Italic and finally the Copper Plate. So it all goes back to 2200 BC when the Phoenicians first developed the phonetic alphabet. For the story of handwriting, it's best to obtain the book by Donald Jackson the Queen's Scribe. I think I have it right here. So this is the book by Donald Jackson and uh, it's a beautifully illustrated book and it tells you the story from beginning to end and I hope you can acquire this book. It could be difficult to acquire, however um, it's well worth it and it would be a great addition to your collection of calligraphy and penmanship books. There it is in all its glory with the illuminated A, this wonderful um, illuminated A by Donald Jackson and A being the key to the story of penmanship. The first letter of the alphabet based on the Aleph from the ancient Egyptians and the hieroglyphics and uh, he has brought it to life with illumination.